Well, hello everybody. It's Bob in one KPR. Not a beautiful snowy day in New England. I think we got about 30 inches so far. We've had seven snowstorms this year. And we're only in the middle of February, so... <sighs> Welcome to the Northeast, huh? Anyhow, listen, I've been getting a lot of uh, emails and inquiries, both uh, in person. Uh, text through the website, through YouTube, and so on, about how we build the uh, the decals for all these projects. And uh, I know I've touched on it. And on my website, I have some detailed... Uh, photographs is step by step going through it, but you know those are photographs. There's no voice, no uh, no announcer. Yours truly uh, to to explain things. So let's let's do this kind of quickly. It's easy, really easy once you get started. Uh, it may sound a little daunting at first, uh, but once you get into it, um, it's not going to be bad. Um, I don't know, uh, I don't know how available this is right now. I'm using, let's go up to the screen here. I'm using PageMaker. You see that up there? PageMaker 7. And it's compatible with this old machine. This is a, uh, I'm using Windows 7 because it's more, it's more friendly for some of my engineering programs than 10, but that's another, that's a sidebar. Um, but, uh, there are other, uh, panel layout programs. I know my friend Rick Cutter, he has, uh, uh, a channel here on YouTube. Uh, you might want to take a, some of the, take a look at some of the things that Rick has done. Rick Cutter, and uh, he has a couple of, uh, videos on how he makes his front panel, uh, nomenclature, decal layout, word things, labels. Um, but this is something I've been doing now for, uh, uh, close to 30 years, I guess, with this program, going back to the old Windows, uh, I think it was XP I started on. Anyhow, here's, uh, here's a finished panel. I've machined it, and, uh, if we get a focus, this is the, uh, the project I'm currently working on now. It's a, uh, oh boy, come on. Come on, baby. It's a peak and notch filter to uh, kind of emulate the old days of the uh, the original uh, Q multipliers that we had in the old tube radios. Those old regenerative uh, high gain things that worked really well. So I said, you know, I want to do this in uh, in solid state. And I'm going to bring it up to date. I'm not going to use uh, air variable caps. I'm going to use... Uh, Resin actor, resin actors, the phone can wait, uh, and so on. So, uh, I decided to put this project together. It incorporates a lot of the pre selector stuff, and Lord knows we've got a lot of that here on this channel. All right, so let's get going. Uh, here it is laid out in uh, PageMaker, and it is the, uh, the middle version, it's this one here. And what I've been doing is just borrowing some of the artwork I've done from some of the older uh, uh, designs. And you just simply cut and paste. And I'll, I'll show you how you do this. Let me bring the... Uh, they were down here. The mousey guys. See, these are some of the modules that I had already made that are in the library here. And once you lay out everything, you can, you can circle them and group them so now you see everything's a group um, but when you create these you start just by making circles the, these circles are the size of the knob and the size of the clearance around the knob you want before you put the nomenclature in and then you can just grab the thing like this and i'm clicking it see i just move it over here just move it around and that makes this whole layout very very friendly very easy to do um, you've got a good scale on the top. You could do inches, you could do fractions, decimal, uh, you could do metric. That's on the X and Y axis. Up here, you could move the datum around. So I'm pulling this datum line down and I'm going to snap it right to the top 
left corner of the panel. And if you notice, I'm doing this in a B format. B is a uh, 11 by 17 piece of paper. And if you notice, we're coming out here to the end at, uh, I won't focus here, it's 16 inches to the very end. Take my word for it. That's 16 inches. That leaves us three inches for a 19 inch rack panel. That's an inch and a half on each side to allow for the mounting and so forth. And that's what you see here. Uh, this will have the one and a half inch ears sticking out for rack mounting. So this baby here is the 16 inches. Um, now, you get this all laid out. What you want to do is just copy this whole image and paste it. We're going to close that. We're going to open up this one. And I pasted it in now to this one, which is now... You see the 11 inches? This is a standard sheet of paper. Just like this thing. A piece of paper. Copy paper out of the printer. And I pasted it in there. But you notice, since it's only 11 inches, I have to do the panel in halves. So we're coming over here, and the last module is the peak filter. Now we get down here below, you can see it's repeated again, peak filter. Then there's the notch, and there's the right-hand side that's the remainder of the 16-inch the, uh, uh, panel. Um, if I had a printer that did a full B-size 17-inch uh, piece of paper, that would be nice, but uh, not necessary. And actually, this is a blessing, because when you glue these down, you want to get the whole alignment just right. I'm using double-sided tape. And um, the smaller these things are up in here, uh, the easier it is going to be to line up the holes as you glue it down. Uh, and watching, trying to watch every hole as you glue it down that everything's lined up. Because once it's stuck, it's stuck. Um, I'm using, you can buy it at any of the stores. It's called window insulation tape. It's very thin, double-sided tape. People use it for putting plastic up instead of uh, storm windows. If you have a three-season room in your house, people do that a lot. So uh, uh, you can buy that. It's uh, half inch wide and very thin. And uh, just ask for a, a weather insulating tape or I don't know. Let me, uh, let me jump up here. Here it is. This is the stuff. Frost King, this this is Frost King, but there it is, half inch, real thin. It's got a nice smooth backing on it, so once you place it in, you can peel it off, and you have the second sticky side available to you to put on the panel. Um, and that's how we did it here. That's, let me hold it up here. There you go. And you can see it's the same... Uh, you know, the sizes are different because it's on the screen, but uh, as you can see, that's the artwork. Uh, the thing is, when you're doing this panel, we'll go back to the... I call this the uh, the machine layout because it's after the panel's machine that you want this label. Let's go back to the 16-inch uh, one here. Uh, you'll notice that in the layout, we always want to know where the how big the knobs are and how much clearance you want for the little lines to come out, you know, the numbers and so forth. And uh, I got to get a better, I got to get a good GoPro or something. Um, but you get the idea. You want to know the limits of the size so that the numbers come up nicely. Um, so when you copy all this into, now this is called the layout drawing, the big one. And when you go to the, let me close that. When you go to the actual machine drawing, you'll notice what I've done is I've clicked on where these circles were. If you see the 
cursor. You can click on those and remove them because you don't want those white circles there anymore. I left the white circles for the LEDs there because the punch I have is exactly that size. So I punch these out by hand uh, with a paper punch. That's a one inch, one eighth inch paper punch for the, uh, and that whole white circle disappears with each punch. These holes for the, uh, this would be a switch, this would be a pot, and this would be a mini, mini, not micro, toggle switch. Um, I just use dinking, they're called dinking punches or dapping punches. But they are as hollow tubes with a sharp edge, you can buy those in the hardware stores. Um... And, you know, choose the proper size to clear the nut that's going to go here. You don't want to tighten the nut against the decal because it'll actually twist the decal material as you tighten it and distort it. It'll look funny. All right. So what you do now is you print this. Um, and it's, uh, you know, very it's, it's solid black. You want to do it in uh, uh, photo format so that you get very nice dark black, not gray. And after you print it, you want to get some of this stuff. Uh, let's get the, the box. I'm using Avery uh, document protector laminate. It's a peel and stick. So you get the whole picture there. There it is. It's uh, peel and stick sheets. They're 9 by 12. There it is here. Here's the shiny side. This stuff has an adhesive underneath it. You just peel this backing off, lay it down on the piece of paper that this is printed on, and off you go. Now, one of the questions is, well, Bob, how do you get white on black? Well, all right. I go to the master page in PageMaker, and I put a big black box, and that big black box is the size of the panel plus a little bit, so you have some margin. And this is in, if you see that R, that's the right, that would be the right, if you're making a book, it'd be the right page. You could have right, left, or just one. And we go to page one, and here we are. And when I print the numbers and the letters, I highlight them and come up here. To, it's hard to do this with, <laughs> with the camera. You see where it says type? Print that. Come down and go to character. And under character, see where it says reverse? Uh, normal. Blah, blah, blah. Reverse. And that will give you a uh, white letter. Or number instead of a black one, reverse or negative. Some of them, some layout probably would say negative, and some would just say white. Uh, so that's it. I hope I explained that well. I hope I didn't make it too confusing. Is there anything else? Um, when you apply this thing, it helps to take the raw panel, this raw panel, and if you have a uh, a light table or a shadow table or something or a piece of clear glass or plexiglass it'd be nice to you could lay that up on an angle so that this is up in the air with a light underneath it so that you could line up the holes and get it perfect uh, I don't do that anymore I just take a white sheet of paper with a good light behind me or in front of me behind the paper I guess and now you see how the the holes line up. You really want to get that done right. And now I'm going to show you here where the seam is. Now remember, this is in two pieces because I can't print a B-size 17-inch uh, piece of paper. Here's the seam on this module. I'm going to try to get that in the light. It's between the peak and notch filter. If you look real hard, you can see the seam where the word, just to the left of the word tune, in that margin, in that module uh, border. So, this, this half, or this third, is one piece. 
as I show here, from here to here. Here's where it's cut. And then I used all of the, the peak all the way over to the left, which is there. See the peak all the way to the left. So that's why we only have one uh, one seam. You do it nice and careful. I use an X-Acto knife, number 11 blade, nice and sharp. Or scissors with magnifying glasses on so that you can cut right up to the white border. Um, and, uh, you know, it's black on black because the panel itself, the machine panel, is black. So if there's a little oops or a goof or something, uh, it probably won't show. All right. That's how we did it. Uh, I'll make a part two if this is uh, <laughs> confusing at all, but it's pretty simple. If you go through it step by step, think it out. The main thing is get your artwork all perfect the way you like it uh, and uh, lay it out this way. And, you know, get out the scissors and a double sided tape and the laminating material. And uh, believe me, it is not as difficult as it may seem. After I laid this panel out from this perspective on uh took about i guess less than 45 minutes uh i put the tape on the back of the uh the laminate after i you know after i cut these out to the border i put the tape on the back side and then i punched the holes because you want the holes going through the tape naturally uh and once the holes are punched in the tape, I just very carefully peeled the backing off the tape. And again, laid this against a white piece of paper. And uh, very cautiously and carefully, uh, without having too much coffee in me, uh, just stuck it down. Stick it down very carefully, very lightly. Be sure you're right, because it's going to be a bear to get it up. You'll probably ruin it trying to get it up, but... Okay, went really long, sorry. Um, in one KPR, uh, is the YouTube channel, www.bobsamerica.com. Oh, you like dogs? There's Bob with a dog. Good old 4th Infantry Division, Vietnam. And those were uh, jungle dogs. They were mutes. They used to run around the jungle. They don't bark. And this one kind of adopted me. Cute little fella. Uh, stay safe, guys. Watch out for the, uh, Coronas that are running around. And, uh, enjoy the hobby. We love you all. Bye-bye.